Can you unravel the world's greatest mysteries? Can you explain the unexplained and find the pieces to the most puzzling cases? Or are you just wondering when the upgrade to your Antikythera mechanism will be released? No one knows what the Antikythera mechanism is for, Tiernan. Oh, don't they? Are you a myth buster? Or a myth truster? I'm Tiernan. And I'm Athena. Welcome to Bust or Trust. A kids' mystery podcast. And, and we are the Busters or Trusters. Or trusters. We look into strange stories from around the world. No mystery is too big for us. Monsters, ghosts and all types of the unexplained. Like, why you never see baby pigeons? Where are they? Maybe pigeons come out of the eggs as adults. Ah, that's why they always look so grumpy. We dive into all the evidence we can find and present all the facts, figures and testimonies. Then it's up to you, our chief detective. You'll work out what it all means and make up your own mind. Is our case mysterious or just mischief? Hmm. Are you a mythbuster like me? Because things aren't always what they seem. Or are you a myth truster like me? Because the truth is stranger than fiction. Is it? What book are you reading? The dictionary. Really? Are you enjoying it? No, way too wordy. We'll tell you at the end of the show just how to get in touch and you can let us know if you're on Team Buster or the best one, Team Truster. We'll also hear from you, our chief detectives, and your thoughts on the previous cases, so stay tuned. But until then, make sure you take notes, pay attention to all the information and start putting together your case. The Case Athena, how well do you remember the poem about the wives of Henry VIII? Ooh, let me see. King Henry VIII had six wives, and I think the poem goes, Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Is that right? Nope. Sorry, completely wrong. Mm, Really? I'm sure that's how I remember it from school. Why do I get the feeling you're up to something? Well, because it should go, Divorced, beheaded, spooks lots of people as a ghost... Divorced, spooks lots of people as a ghost, survived. Is this because of today's case, all about the historic hauntings of Henry VIII's Hampton Court Palace? Yes, of course. And you know what? I'm so excited about it that I'm not even scared that we're going to be talking about spooky ghosts. Oh, no. OK, this is getting ridiculous. You have to stop doing that every time we have an even slightly scary mystery. (laughs) I'll stop doing it when you stop being scared of things that don't exist. Well, as always, whether the ghosts exist or not is up to the chief detectives to decide. This week, listeners, we are going to look at one of the most haunted places in England, Hampton Court Palace. Do you have any facts for us about it, Athena? Well, of course, Hampton Court is a royal palace in the southwest borough of London called Richmond upon Thames. The area is famous for the Q Royal Botanical Gardens, for being home of the National Archives, where all the nation's most important documents are held, and of course, for Hampton Court Palace. Built in the 16th century for King Henry VIII, the palace became one of the king's most favourite homes. Henry VIII was the king of England for the first half of the 1500s. He was very well known for having six wives, starting the Church of England and having a very large appetite. After Henry VIII, Hampton Court Palace changed under different kings and the last royal to actually live there was King George II in the 1700s. Now it is a very popular tourist attraction with its very famous maze, the world's largest grapevine and a historic royal tennis court. But it is also known as one of the most haunted places in England with at least five ghosts said to roam its grounds including two wives of Henry VIII, Jane Seymour and Catherine Howard. Then there's the Grey Lady, a ghost known as Skeletor and a lot more. These ghosts also help Hampton Court Palace to be the tourist attraction it is today, as lots of visitors hope to get a glimpse of one of these creepy characters when they visit. Ooh, and let me tell you, there's a royal amount of evidence to get your teeth into on this one. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Chief Detectives, it's up to you to decide whether Hampton Court is really haunted or not. That's the spirit, Athena, or, uh, these are. Here's our first piece of evidence. First piece of evidence. Our first piece of evidence is actually, well, loads of pieces of evidence all squished together. Hang on, that's not fair. Well, it is, because there's so many witness accounts from staff, residents and tourists who visited the palace and seen, heard or felt something spooky that if I listed them all individually, this episode would go on for even longer than Hampton Court Palace has been standing. So, here are a choice few, just for you. 
In the 1830s, the first floor rooms in Hampton Court were home to the Ponsonby family. They complained that they were regularly disturbed by the sounds of a woman screaming and a spinning wheel. Then, according to reports, investigators found a sealed chamber behind a wall which had inside a spinning wheel. Around the same time, a guard saw a woman in a grey hooded robe leave the apartments and then vanish. Princess Federica of Hanover, who also spotted this woman when visiting, described her as a tall, gaunt figure dressed in a long grey robe with a hood on her head and her lanky hands outstretched before her. Then, so many witnesses have seen who is assumed to be Jane Seymour, Henry VIII's third wife, as a ghostly lady in a long white gown who carries a candle down the stairs and into the courtyard. A number of witnesses have seen a ghost believed to be Catherine Howard, Henry VIII's fifth wife, as a woman dressed in white with long flowing hair drifting through what is now known as the Haunted Gallery. One eyewitness said, just as she reaches the royal pew, she lets out an unearthly shriek and hurries back towards the top of the stairs with a ghastly look of despair. Sometimes a ghostly hand wearing a ring has been seen from behind the curtain and many visitors to the gallery reported feeling cold and some have even fainted. Lady Hildyard lived in Hampton Court Palace in 1817 and claimed her room was constantly visited by invisible beings and she was disturbed by the sound of knocking. When builders came in to build new drains, they found the skeletons of two men buried under the pathway by her room. Those are all very strange and very spooky. But you say they are eyewitness accounts, and yet there don't seem to be names for a number of the people who saw these things. And where there are names, it's often people who lived in Hampton Court Palace hundreds of years ago, during a time when many people were a lot more superstitious than they are now. That means they were more willing to believe something that happens is caused by magic or the supernatural. Professor Richard Wiseman is a psychologist. He studies how people feel and behave. He also specialises in debunking things that people think are supernatural. He carried out an experiment at Hampton Court with 600 people, asking them to know all the places in the building where they thought they felt something unusual. The results showed that a lot of them did feel something strange in the areas that are meant to be haunted, even if the people didn't know about the ghost stories. But these areas also had differences in how they were lit or how they were heated, and Richard Wiseman said these unusual feelings could just as easily have been caused by normal parts of their surroundings. OK, but what's to say ghosties didn't make it feel colder or, you know, turn down the light as they were trying to relax? And that experiment is super interesting, but it doesn't really help with piece of evidence number two. Second piece of evidence. Which are photos of the ghosts at Hampton Court. In 2012, a bus driver called Trevor Tye took a photo in an area of the palace called the Queen's Staircase. And in the picture, you can clearly see the figure of a very pale white young woman staring down to the landing below. Trevor said he didn't notice anything in the room until he got home and looked at the photos and his friend asked who the girl in the picture was. Then, in 2015, a 12-year-old schoolgirl called Holly was visiting Hampton Court with her cousin Brooke. She took a picture of her cousin as they walked around the haunted gallery and on looking at the pictures after, there is a very creepy, wispy grey figure right beside her who wasn't there at the time. Spooky! I've seen these pictures and I'm afraid they've both already been proven to be faked. Trevor Ty claims he is a paranormal investigator but is known to use a special app to fake ghost photos, taking images from old pictures and putting them into modern ones so it looks like there's a strange figure there in clothes from another time. And as for Holly's picture, well, she didn't fake the image on purpose, but experts say the wispy grey figure is almost certainly what happens when you take a panoramic picture and someone in it moves halfway through. Which is annoying, but a great tip if you want to take your own ghostly pics. OK, but the people who investigated Trevor Ty's picture said they didn't know for sure how he'd put the Hampton Court image together. And the photographic experts say they thought Holly's pic was a camera error. But none of those mean they definitely were fakes. Just that they might be. Who knows, maybe Holly snapped the grey lady moving too quickly through her panoramic photo and maybe Trevor Ty shocked himself by getting a genuine ghost snap for once. That is true, no one has said for sure about either of them but when you see examples of how they could have been done the images look very similar. Well, maybe then the ghosties messed with the phones for a laugh. But there's definitely no tampering or clever explanation for piece of evidence number three. 
third piece of evidence. Skeletor! Yes, our third piece of evidence is a very hair-raising clip of CCTV footage. CCTV are usually security cameras used to monitor places at night for safety, and the camera that took this particular video was set up in an area of Hampton Court called the Colonnade. That's the name used when lots of columns are joined together. In October of 2003, there was a new exhibition in rooms behind that area, but just after opening up, the fire alarm went off. Security raced around to see what had happened, and they found the fire doors wide open, but absolutely no one there. They checked the CCTV footage and it showed the doors flying open by themselves, which is already strange. But the next day, the fire alarm went off again. Again, the fire doors were open and no one was there. This time, though, on the CCTV footage, there was a strange robed figure with a pale white face and pale white hand opening the doors and then disappearing back inside. One of the palace security guards said, it was incredibly spooky because the face just didn't look human. My first reaction was that someone was having a laugh, so I asked my colleagues to take a look. We spoke to our costume guides, but they don't own a costume like that worn by the figure. It's actually quite unnerving. Hampton Court staff have now nicknamed the ghost Skeletor because he looks like the villain from the 1980s cartoon He-Man. I have to admit, you've got me on this one, Tiernan. It does look like it's someone in a Halloween costume, but there is no evidence anyone at all was in that area, let alone dressed up like that. Even the psychologist, Richard Wiseman, has been stumped by the footage and said, it could be the best ghost sighting ever. I haven't seen anything that would match that at all. That doesn't mean it isn't a big prank, though. And maybe the team at Hampton Court have just managed to trick us all with a very clever hoax. It definitely helps get the tourists in, doesn't it? I find it so interesting that people are drawn to going somewhere where there might be things that terrify them. It is weird, isn't it? I can't imagine wanting to be scared at all. It's making me wonder if having a very popular scary attraction wouldn't be all that hard to do. Welcome to the most terrifying, frightening, worrying, knee-trembling, bone-chilling place you will ever visit. What is it? What's inside? There is nothing I can do or say to warn you enough of the horrors within. I couldn't possibly prepare you for what might happen once inside. Is it ghosts? Is the building haunted? Oh, no. Much, much worse. Monsters! Is there a murderer on the loose? No, nothing as cheap and pathetic as those things. We only have real horror here. Are there a pit of snakes? Poisonous spiders? Dark rooms full of spikes? Absolutely not. Do you think we are amateurs? Trust me, what you're about to experience is the ultimate fear. Now, please step inside... <laughs> I'm so excited! I'm petrified! Let me in! Uh, when do things start happening? This is just a square room with nothing in it. How boring! Exactly! But you'll see. Okay, weird. Is there a loo in here? I forgot to go before I left. Absolutely not. Somewhere to sit? Nope. Nor pictures on walls or any tables. Nothing, in fact. Can I buy a drink? You can't. Well, this is boring. I'm going to go online and write you a bad review immediately. Go ahead and try. What? No Wi-Fi signal? None at all? Not even 3G. And the door will not open for an hour. Wait, that's just... Terrifying! How, how, how long did you say we were going to be in here for? You could always try making small talk. No, let me out. I can't take it anymore. Ah! <laughs> Oof, that is scary. I wouldn't cope at all. You know what's even scarier, though? What? That our chief detectives may be on team trusted with this case. So, they'd better listen to all the evidence and work it out. Is Hampton Court haunted or just an old building that sparks the imagination? Evidence, please, Tiernan. Right away. Evidence Recap. 
Our first piece of evidence is the many witness accounts over the years of sightings of several different ghosts around Hampton Court, as well as reports of feeling cold or faint in certain rooms. But a lot of these accounts are from unnamed witnesses, making them unreliable. And Professor Richard Wiseman said some of the surroundings could be what makes people feel strange. Our second piece of evidence were photos of the ghosts. One from 2012 of a figure on the Queen's staircase and one from 2015 of the Grey Lady. Except the first photo is by someone who has been proven to fake ghost photos before and experts say the second one is almost certainly a fault caused by a phone camera. The third piece of evidence is Skeletor, the strange robed figure with a pale face caught on CCTV that has spooked even the staff at Hampton Court. And yes, I have to admit, no one seems to have an explanation for this one. But it really does look like someone in a costume. So now we're handing it over to you, Chief Detectives. What do you think? Are you a Hampton Court Hauntings myth buster? Or a Hampton Court Hauntings myth truster? We want to hear from you and what you think. And most importantly, which side you're on. Clearly Team Truster though, right? They're on Team Buster, definitely. Send us your voice notes with an explanation of why you're a Myth Truster or Myth Buster when it comes to the Hampton Court hauntings. All you have to do is ask your grown-ups to help you email us your voice notes or thoughts to hello at bustortrust.com. Tell us your name, age, what you think all the evidence means and please, please make sure your grown-ups give us permission to use your voice notes in our next episode. We won't always be able to use all of them. But we do love to hear them and here are some thoughts from you lot, our chief detectives, on the last few episodes. My name is Andrew and I'm seven years old. I have just started listening to your podcast. I trust that Bigfoot exists because there were three pieces of evidence that mean it was correct and only one that meant it was wrong. Andrew, welcome to Team Truster and thanks so much for listening to our episode on Bigfoot. And you know what? I think you've got a point. There are too many big clues about Bigfoot for it not to be real. So, here's a big hand for your careful examination of the evidence. Woo! Go, Andrew! Hi, I'm Jace Cox. I'm from um, Florida in the USA, and I'm 10 years old. And I'm a myth buster on the mystical powers of Baba Banga. Because if she had mystical powers, then why did she only have the powers that nobody else could tell when and how she was using? Thank you. Bye. Exactly, Jace Cox. Exactly. If she had mystical powers, how come nobody knew when she was using them? If I had mystical powers, I would be like, at midday on Wednesday, I'm going to turn this orange into a pancake. And I'd just do it. I'd, and I would make sure everyone could see it. And then I'd be like, that's your evidence. So... Vanga, where's your evidence? Exactly. Jace Cox, you are a clever person. Well, Athena, it seems there's no end to how clever our chief detectives can be. It's so great how they always come up with things that we don't even think of. They are a savvy bunch. And if you enjoyed the show, please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Amazon Music or wherever you listen to your podcasts for more great episodes. We love to hear what you think, so please do rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It helps more detectives find Bust or Trust. We'll even read some of the reviews out on the show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time for more Bust or Trust. Athena, do you know what our chief detectives would be called if they were ghosts? Ooh, let me guess, a bogey fan? A bogey fan, like sort of bogeys from your nose. I don't really understand why you'd say that. No, no, like the bogeyman. But instead of man, it's fan. But oh, forget it. What did you have? Chief inspectors. And you insulted bogey fan. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs>